system. So today we're going to show you how to set up the control room to uh, record a show in Studio B. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on the display, the 85 inch um, display. And there are two buttons over here on the touch panel. And the one we want to select is Eagle Vision. And that will set up the TV with the right inputs and it'll try to get it as much as possible, ready as much as possible for you. Um, one thing that this control panel does not do is set it into the four quadrant mode. So we need to grab the remote for the TV. Looks like this. And once it's on, and it's once this tells us that it's ready to accept inputs, and that's say no signal right now no, because nothing's on. Uh, we're going to go over to the tools button. I'm going to point that at the TV, and then down to multi-screen. Right now it's off, so I'm going to go down to four screen mode and hit return on here, hopefully. If it doesn't go away, it should go away eventually. Um, there it is. It just wasn't accepting the input. Um, it looks like we're actually, the Appantech is being a little funky right now, but um, we'll keep running through it. Um, so the next thing would be to turn on the cameras themselves. So the camera control units are these three things here, these three boxes here. So the switch on the side, the power switch, um, we can just flip that up and that will turn the cameras on in the studio. So you'll see the cameras come to life inside the studio once we turn that on. And once, um, it's, once these cam camera control units start receiving the input, we should be able to see that um, on the screen over here. So there's no lights on in the studio right now, so it's kind of dark, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, next thing in this second column here, it would be the recorder. So we want to be able to record the show. So the power button for the AJA Key Pro rack, we just want to hit that power button. It says record deck on here, it's labeled record deck, and this is where all of our output's going to be recorded to. And beneath that is the switcher itself. So this box is what does the actual switching. The control panel, control unit on the desk is just a remote control. So we want to flip both of those switches. And as soon as that's on, we should see a few more displays pop up on the screen. And that's all we have to turn on, really. So the next thing we want to turn on at the table is probably the audio board. So we go down to the far end of the control desk here. And I'll come around this way. There is a switch about halfway back on the back of this little rocker switch. Actually, it's not about halfway back. It's right next to the power cord. Just flip that. Once the audio board is on, uh, we want to make sure that it's in the proper Eagle Vision configuration. We set this little user defined key, the one that says E, we set that for the Eagle Vision setup. So if I hit that key, it should reset everything on the board. So everything's ready to go. So you have uh, four reporter mics or four anchors and two playouts for the playout computer and then the main output. And that all gets transferred over to the main, audio, uh, the main recorder. So we have three computers at the desk. The first one at the far left is for the prompter. And we're going to sign in using our username and password. And the username and password for all three computers is currently Jim Jim, J-I-M-J-I-M. -I -I it's a carryover from journalism and integrated media when the department was called journalism and integrated media. So this program that pops up is called Ross Video Easy Prompt. And that's built um, in conjunction with Easy News, not Easy News, sorry, with uh, Inception News. And so if those shows are ready to go on Inception News, they should show up here in Easy Prompt. If we click the Open button, we can pick our show or whatever we call the show. Let's pick Show 10 for now. And we should see all of the packages and all of the running orders here in this window. And we can just uh, start the prompter. Prompt current. And that should show up on the prompters on the cameras in the studio. Did I go through one? There we go. All right, so once we're done, we can hit the escape key and that'll close it all out. So next computer is for playout and that's if we have videos that we're gonna be playing out in a sequence. So the same thing, Jim Jim to log into the computer.
And we'll let that log in. I'll also log into the last computer over here on the end. This is for the TD. This is mostly just a reference computer. If someone needs to have uh, Inception is open, or if we just have need to have a web browser open or anything, this is just a basic general computer. And going back to the playout computer, uh, we have a program called Pro Video Server where we can load all of our videos, and that will play out to the switcher, so we should be able to see it on the bottom left corner of the big display. So any of the videos that we load up here, we can just hit play and they should show up. Right now all we have are still images, so all you're going to see is that picture right now. But depending on what we have loaded, we can just play it out directly. So the big unit here is the control for the switcher. So we have a separate controller up here at the top that we can turn on. It's more of a uh, touchscreen interface, but it does the same thing. So while that turns on, we can have a basic overview of the switcher itself. So we have what are called MEs. There's ME1 and ME2. ME1 is the one we use for the green screen. So we can load all of our still images into here, and then that will get blended on the switcher end so that we can have the person walking in front of the image. And ME2 is where we do all of our camera switching. So we have camera 1, camera 2, camera 3, and then the individual still images if we want to pull those up directly without going through the green screen section. And so we can just switch between uh, different cameras by going directly to them, by cutting directly to them. So that's camera one, camera two, or camera three. So the top is called the program. That's what goes directly to the output. And the bottom is called the preview. So we can preview what we're going to pull up next. So as I go through these cameras, the left is preview, and the right is program. So if I want to switch between two different cameras, so for example, I have uh, camera one in program, camera two in preview right now. So if I go over to the slider over here on the end and I slide it up, it's going to switch between those two cameras. Oh, we actually have a fancy effect on them right now. And we can also hit the auto button and that will automatically switch between the two cameras without having to use the lever, the switcher. And that's pretty much it. So depending on which cameras you want to pull up, you can cue them up and take the shot to the next camera. All right, so once the show is recorded, we want to take all of that footage and transfer it onto the Eagle Vision folder on the server. So we can open up a web browser. Any web browser from anywhere on campus will work, but we have this computer here available. So we're going to go to recorder. Dot productioncenter.biola.edu. So recorder meaning the recorder that's in the rack over there. And we are presented with the interface for the AGA Key Pro rack, which is that recorder over there. So we want to go over to media. And the media state right now is set for record play, meaning that it's going to be recording or playing back whatever clips are on the hard drive itself. So we need to switch that over to data LAN so that we can access those individual clips that are on there. So once that's switched over, we don't have to save any changes, changes or anything. It just switches automatically. We can go over to All Clips, and it will show us all of the clips that are currently available on the hard drives on that recorder. So we can select the ones that we want, and then hit the Download button. And that will allow us to download all of the individual clips. So because these are really large files, this one's 52 gigs, we want to give it a little bit of time. And so that'll download to our local, local computer, and then we can connect to the server and then transfer everything over. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I wonder if there are any 